Right, so it's Parry Bay on the weekend. Tillan Van Baal won it. And the question is, what numbers did he do? So I thought we'll go do some comparison, see how hard Parry Bay was. This year it got taken on very early uh, by Ineos. And the question is, did it make a harder race? Did it make an easier race? So I found some data from back in the day um, from 2019, which was the last time they run at the traditional part of the year. And we're going to compare it to some of Dylan Van Baal's data. So we'll go to through Dylan Van Baal's data first. So 350 normalized for six hours. Not the most crazy power I've seen. Still unbelievable. I, but that is generally what you need to win Roubaix. I think Matty Heyman did, he said he did about 360. So super, super strong. Threshold 450 at 72 ki 77 kilos. Is that right? I wouldn't be surprised if it is. So average speed, 44.8 kilometers an hour. This does include the neutral as well. Um, if we look at uh, just the actual race, 45 and a half, fastest parry bear ever. I wouldn't read too much into it because obviously it is heavily influenced by tailwinds and aerodynamics and all the rest of it. We also might go through his bike. I think I will go through his bike as well at the end. So stay tuned for that because I think it's really important to show why technically uh, on the in terms of materials, he was on the better materials than everyone else. So anyway... The question is, was Paris Bay harder than than, uh, than previous years? So if we look at the, the normalized, it's 355. You look at the heart rate, it's quite good to tell, obviously. So you think the first bit here was quite chill, 323 normalized, um, heart rate 130, a classic, you know, I like to cruise around 130, 330 normalized. But the first, you know, two hours, 40, 346 normalized. So this was... Um, Evalda Siskovicius, when he was riding for FDJ, I, I thought he wasn't a protected rider because if we look at the watts, the watts for the first 100k here as well, you can see 356 normal. So I was like, okay, maybe he was in the break, but I don't think he was. But we also look at Edwin Turns, who definitely was not in the break. Um, his power data is, is obviously not good here. But again, if we look at the first 100k, 330 normalized. So the question is, is it a harder parry bay than the earlier sections at the beginning? I don't know. I don't necessarily think it is. I think it was raced faster. You can see 47 and a half average compared to a, a 44 average here. But I don't think it normalized wise, it looks that different um, in reality. So, you know, obviously the first bit was really hard. If we look at the peak normalized as well, that's always interesting to see. But you can see here the peak was three, three hours at 362, which is the second half. And I think this is the difference between Paris Bay and Tour of Flanders is that Tour of Flanders, the first bit is easy. Paris Bay, none of them are easy. But like, look at this, it's 350 normalized. That's what you need to do. I think it goes to show that there's stress because the cobbles do come, okay, from about 100 kilometers in. But even the first bit, there is, does seem to be a lot of stress, especially this year because of the crosswinds and because when Ineos really split it. Um, like you can see here, this part here was really actually some super high power. Um, and if we look at actually some of the peak numbers as well, like the peak one minute power, um, it often did actually come uh, from this part here where they sort of whacked it onto, um, sorry, this is actually... Um, this is some cobbles to be fair. This is on uh, Unshi. Um, but again, like, you know, it's, it comes quite early on in the race. Um, so yeah, pretty, but that's actually, yeah, but we're around 12 watt of Ville. But you can see here, like 536 normalized, pretty, 536 watts pretty early on. But my point is, is that Paris Bay is hard. It's hard from the off. So anyway, let's get into the final part of the race um, and really, you know, where its selection started. So if we look at like the first, so it was about 130k in is where you generally get a lot of the cobbled sections. You can see here, like 456 watts over here. Um, if we look at, we sort of got more. I want to find um, Arenberg because that's always a de decisive part as well of the race, which I believe is 130k to go. So I don't really know why I can't find it. It might just be easy if I go on here um, and have a look for Arenberg because... Arenberg was actually not done by Mohoric too crazily. He only did about 400 watts. But if we look at Trey de Arenberg, it's actually downhill, 39k an hour, 384 watts. So you can see it's like, it's not actually that crazy. You can see some some of the Conti boys have gone quicker than, than some other people. Um, and you can see it's like, this part here is actually, obviously the, the bit into it is fast, but because it wasn't such a big group, it wasn't actually as crazy. Um, and also they only start to do power here. But if you've ever ridden on cobbles, you'll know it's really hard to do power on the cobbles. Um, but I think that really opened up the race. Um, and then we saw in the following cobbled section, again, here, there was a lot more chasing. So you can see this is another 400 watt um, area. And you can see the lefts, the rights. You can see the pavés are going across uh, Monzon Pavale, which is one of the big ones. And that was when, really when a lot of the big moves started to go with Wout Van Aert, Stefan Kung really attacking. But I think the interesting thing is if we look actually look at the end part, which is the, the last where where he had the massive bridge um, to get across. So if we look, I think, I believe the bridge was basically this part here, um, which was about four minutes, three kilometers, 450 watts to bridge across. 
um, onto uh, the lead group, which was uh, Lampert and uh, Steuben at that point. Um, I think I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. Uh, and De Vrindt, sorry. Uh, and then the, the, the part really that I think everyone wants to see is like, what was he actually doing in the final? So you can see he bridged across here, but then when he goes finally, it's this bit here and he's on the cold section. So if you go, this is Confort on Pavel. So they turned left onto it and he was really had quite a big lead from the off, but that's really when he started to put the power down. And you can see here, it's just a steady 390 watts the whole time. If we actually look on the cobbled section itself, Confort on Pavel, Pavel eh, sorry, my French isn't perfect, to Grousson, um, 400 watts, but you can see there's quite a lot of accelerations early on, um, but that's sort of the power it takes to, to do it. It's just, it's like on the main parts, this bit here, it was really where you started to pile on the pressure, 450 watts, and that is a lot of watts on the cobbles. Cobbles do really sap your legs. And after we went on that cobbled section, it was just 390 watts for 22 minutes, which is just crazy. Like, there's no other way of putting it, because obviously this isn't even on like flat concrete. You look, this part here was on Monzon Pavelle, and it was after he really pulled off, you can see the speeds start to come a lot higher. And um, if we zoom in here, you'll see, sorry, Comfort on Pavelle. This is through Grousson. And then after that, the speed cut starts to come up and you can see he's going like 45, 50K an hour when he actually gets towards Roubaix. Um, and you can see here into the Roubaix Velodrome, he's still doing like 390 watts, 47K an hour. So you can see like, it's a super crazy performance that's required, especially like, Mons on Pavelle and Campan on Pavelle were both the real big cobbled sections when he had to do massive watts. You look here, like 411 watts on cobbles, obviously with quite a lot of um, peaks and troughs where they're going around corners. And you can see the peak 10 minutes as well comes at the same section, 415 watts. Obviously the watts per kilo, not absolutely bonkers, but you know, just general toughness all round is pretty crazy. Um, again, 30 second power comes on earlier. So, and this is what I was saying, that like, this is sort of where the, a lot of selections will happen. And it was a hard race all day. Um, you can see here, 1100 kilojoules per hour burn. So you think you, for you to like replace your glycogen at that rate, you have to eat 250 grams an hour, which is impossible. And you can illustrates that you really have to have massive fat oxidative ability because you need to be able to burn enough fat that you can spare your glycogen, even though you're gonna, he's probably on like 100 grams an hour, 120. So you think, he needs to be burning 500 grams of fat an hour almost to like not be depleted. Obviously, he's not doing that. That's impossible. But you start to get to the point of like the sort of the, the ridiculousness of um, how strong they are is that there's 350 normalizers hard, but it's a point where, you know, they're not depleting too much. They can still do these super, super high efforts at the end. And um, yeah, to win it is 399 normalizers for 22 minutes, which is uh, at the end of the race, which is absolutely crazy. But anyway, cheers for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video um, and I'll see you in the next one.